Up next on the Tesla Plaid channel. to you every once in a while. Welcome back to the Tesla Plaid channel. We've put our Plaid Model X for sale on a eBay Motors auction and we're looking forward to seeing what it'll fetch. That auction closes this Thursday, March 31st. So if you or somebody you know is interested, it's got the 20 inch wheels, the gray exterior paint, the cream interior, and no full self-driving. The current bid price as of the time I'm recording this is barely $1,000 more than the MSRP from Tesla. So somebody could get this Plaid Model X a year sooner for just slightly more than what they would pay Tesla to get it for a year from now. Funny how when you do an eBay auction, everybody wants to take the reserve price and turn that into the buy it now price. So almost every buyer I've communicated with has said, I'll give you that reserve price today. Well, of course they will, because they know the car is worth more than the reserve price. So we'll see what it goes for in about five days from now. Looking forward to this Plaid Model X finding a new loving home. We we're able to get out and race twice this past week. And I'm gonna start with the second night of racing because it had a couple of races that I particularly enjoyed. And then the next video, a few days from now, we'll have the first night of racing. So I'm gonna present them out of order. Hope you enjoy them. Check it out. March 23rd, 2022, out at Showtime Drag Strip. Some of the usual suspects are here. Some new cars as well. We're on the heavier Nitto NT01 tires tonight on a 20 inch MW03 Martian wheel. These Nittos are a little heavier than stock, but more reliable traction due to their softer compound. We're hoping to cut some 6.0s, but probably mostly 6.10s tonight. We got Oscar and his 69 Camaro out here tonight. Hey Oscar, how's it going? Hey, how, hey, how you doing, man? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. How you doing tonight? Good, good yourself. Good, good. Well, so here comes Oscar in the 69 Camaro. All right, we're getting lined up with the 69 Camaro, but Oscar likes to be on the left lane. So, we are gonna be in the right lane, which means we get no GoPro action. Sorry about that. But what we are gonna do is get a good pass. He sounded better. He just put a bigger carburetor on there at 1250. jump in try to get staged early and yeah I'm gonna double ball them but he's my buddy so it's all right I'm not sure what that was all about but that's all right we're trying to get our best DC here I'm not sure what that was all about but that's all right we're trying to get our best DC here but it is dangerous coming up on a car that fast. I don't recommend doing what I just did there. Because <laughs> I came up on uh, him, I was doing 120 and I can't tell you what he was doing, but it was a whole lot less. And that's dangerous. So don't do that. <laughs> I should have let him get completely down the track and just ignored the light, but I was still trying to run my own race. Leave on green. Get some kind of a reaction time. I was fully staged in launch mode. Try to get a 6.0 ET. But he came through the trap so slow, he might have been thinking about taking that first exit to the return road to get his time slip. If he'd have come across the track there in that first one, <laughs> uh, that'd have been really bad. Now he's an experienced racer. He should have known not to do that, but it looked like he was, uh, at least a little bit towards the middle of the track when I came up on him, but that kind of speed differential after the finish line is very dangerous coming up on somebody. If you're going faster, you want to be ahead of him at the finish line, and then the slower car falls behind the faster car. But I had to get really hard in the brakes there to fall behind him. Hey there. How's it going? 
I mean, it's going. I'm not sure how it's going. I keep watching that, um, the Black Dodge. Yeah. Yeah, he's made some good runs. So I know he had at least a yeah. 610. Unfortunately, he uh, stopped running right as I started running. So oh, uh, that would have been a close uh, race. When that would have been a real close race. Yeah, um, he's done for the night. He said he was afraid that it's going to rain and he doesn't want to drive in the rain on those tires because he's on, uh, slicks. you know, near slicks. Yeah, yeah. well, I yeah. don't blame him. <laughs> but maybe that Camaro will speed up and uh, that might be my closest um, race. And this Mustang, I think, is uh, pretty darn fast. You're going to be looking at a slip here in a second. Was he like... He might be no time though. Okay. If, if he's no time, don't tell me, but. <laughs> All right, first pass of the night. We haven't heat soaked it yet. 6.03 and all the speculators. Oh, your car is slowing down. Sorry, 6.03 at 121 miles an hour. Slowing down my eye. <laughs> this is on the heavy nittos tonight. I thought a best pass of the night might be, you know, 6.05 maybe, maybe. What was your best run tonight? 610 even? Cool, cool. You know, when I go to the charger and I heat it up, because it gets so much heat at the charger, if I go right in and race like that, it's a little faster. So I cut a 603 even on the heavy nittos. Oh, nice. Yeah, which is unusual. But it's because I didn't let it cool down at all. What was your mile per hour? 121. That's weird, like... What, was your mile an hour better tonight too? I had a 610 at 116 miles an hour. And is that a better mile an hour than usual? Well, I got a lot done to it, so I don't know. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I'm gonna wait until they re-prep. Oh, you will do another one? Okay, cool. I'll see you in a bit. Yes, I'd like to save all my charge to race Mike, but I'd also like to cut a 599. <laughs> All right, we're having a tough time getting cars to line up with us tonight. It seems like all the fastest cars wait until they see me out here in the water box and then they get in the staging lanes and make a pass behind me. But um, could just be coincidence, of course. How's it going, Dusty? Guys so bad, they're taking off an hour early. <laughs> Something like that. No, he said his line log, he's been having all kinds of problems. Shit ain't holding, shit ain't working. Yeah, I, I knew that wasn't his launch, but um, 603, this car's running fast tonight. 603? So. Yeah, because our boards ain't working and I don't know what the hell happened. Every uh, time yeah, we have it? a rental out here and they let their people run it, something breaks. Oh, okay, I didn't know the yeah. boards were out for everybody. I thought everyone was running no time. Right. Track feels sticky. And we're going to get fully into launch mode here. As soon as it says, ready for launch. There we go. That felt like a fast pass. I just saw what looked like a blue Chevelle come in on a trailer, so hopefully there's more fast cars coming in. And I thought Mike might have been done for the night, but maybe he saw the forecast better than he expected. So he's gonna stick around and make one more pass, and that'll be a good race. He's on a pro tree, so I know that now. The question is, will I remember it when I get to the starting line? It felt fast. It was. Was it? Yes. <laughs> I know what I'm hoping for. 605? <laughs> oh, 605. I was hoping for the 5 to be the first digit. It was a good 60 foot, 149. Yeah, it is. But uh, I thought it would be faster than the 603 we ran, and that's a 605. And the mile an hour, down about a whole mile an hour, that's surprising. Yep, 120.6. It was just 121 in the previous, yep. so surprising. Well, I think the fast cars are waiting until uh, the reprep at 8 o'clock, so <laughs> I might make one more, but the more I make, the slower my car gets as I run out of battery. So do I save my battery to, for a good race, or do I... Save it for a good race. I should. Save it for a good race, yes. <laughs> right. I thought that second pass was going to be faster than the first one, but just a touch slower. 6.05 at 120.0 compared to 603 at 121.0. So one mile an hour slower on that second pass. 60 foot was 147 on the first pass and 149 on the second. And the slightest little bit of traction loss is easily gonna cost 100 or two. So I think that's what that just was. So we're gonna hang out, wait for one of these faster cars, either the Camaro, the Mustang with the chute, or the Red Eye Challenger, all of which are capable of low sixes. Here in front. Oh, 
First time going down next to a truck since uh, certain really bad experience last month. But does beat going down alone? Find out. That's a good sound of burnout. Okay, this is going to be uh, an imperfect staging. I don't know the driver of this truck, and I don't want to double bulb the truck, which is a faux pas, a discourtesy to another driver. So they got one bulb. I'm going to go up and take two. I'm actually deep now. Shoot. I'm worse than deep. truck the move but I was so deeply staged that I had a severe risk of red lighting if I would have left when I normally leave so I decided to just wait till I saw green and be on the safe side not lose it at the tree and let the 1020 horsepower do its job thankfully it did that was a quick truck it was out of the hole out 60 foot at us even we're at 86 percent battery charge after those three runs went 92 down to 90 then to 88 out of 86. That was a good one. I like the sound of that. Well, it was a 613, it wasn't a 610. All right, cool. Thanks. Well, it felt like a fast run, but it was a 613 at 120.1. And yeah, sure enough, that truck did out 60 foot us with a 150 to our 156. Not sure we, why we were so slow coming out of the hole. And yeah, I expected the bad reaction time, 0.29, but that was intentional. And that truck cut a double O light, so. That truck knew what it was doing at the tree and had uh, essentially three tenths of a second on us right from the get-go between its double zero and our 0.297. So thankfully we uh, had enough power to come around it with our 613 at 120. It ran a 707 at 95.1. That was fun. And most importantly, the truck stayed in its lane. Love it. You're really on that light. I'm trying. Nice one. 001. Yep. <laughs> All right, next up, the Red Eye Challenger. Mike keeps getting faster in his Red Eye Challenger. He cut a 610 already tonight. Not much tread on those ET Street R's. Those are big 315s. Uh, I'm slowing down with every pass. Oh, really? I was 603, 605, 613. Okay. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for traction. Yeah, we need traction. All right, we got the lineup we wanted against Mike's Red Eye. His 610 on his last run was faster than my last run at 613. He's on a pro tree, and I'm going to need to cut a decent light because he's been practicing the pro tree like, and I still only have a few dozen pro tree passes. The reprep in the track now, so traction should not be our issue. It's all going to come down to the light and how our cars perform. I'm predicting we could both be really close to 610. Could very well come down to the reaction times and nothing more. We're at 86% battery state of charge. So those extra runs we made earlier and the fact we only showed up here at 92 might come back to bite us. All right, let's put together a good pass on the pro tree. Cool, they left the lane dry over here. I made that request to the water box guy and it's looking particularly dry. Surprised he didn't do a longer burnout than that. I wonder if he's going to do a second one. 
No? All right, we both rolled through intentionally. And I'm gonna go in first, per our previous agreement. And we are gonna get staged up. He's coming in. Remember, this is a pro tree now. There it goes. Oh, I got him on the light. Well, I'm gonna get him. There it goes. Oh, I got him on the light. Well, I'm gonna get him. I had talked to the starter beforehand. I said, don't give me anything special. Don't hold the light. Once we're both on two bulbs, do your normal thing. I never want a race to be unfair to the other driver because he's holding the light for me to get staged or something. So we both had two bulbs. He started the tree and not sure why he didn't leave a little quicker. Mike is usually quite good on that tree. Pro tree. And he was definitely expecting a pro tree. His car is the one that says PT on the window. Felt like a good pass for us. Let's see how fast. 611. 611. He did stick around to make that pass with me after all. Good. Yeah. I'm looking I'm forward glad. to seeing what he did. He was I a little. I don't know what they're going to do now because that little car there that just came down the road broke and they said they think part of his turbo fell off on the. Oh crap. Oh crap. <laughs> I know. Oh no. Okay, so that import dropped part of his turbo on the track and I bet you by the time they get it cleaned up, we're going to have rain. Oh, that sucks. I better take it out of track strip mode. And we're probably done with this as well. So on that pass, we ran a 6.11 at 120.58. And not sure why the red eye didn't run faster. He ran a 6.61 at 1.14. Yeah, you can see it in a 60 foot. I had a 153, not great, but his 167 was particularly off for that car. I think that thing is run in the 130s in the 60 foot. So not sure what was uh, going on with his launch. Maybe he spun. He didn't get a great burnout. And his reaction wasn't there either, a 0.41 to my 0.12 on the pro tree. Let's talk to him. That wasn't your kind of pass. I mean, I expected, uh, I mean, did you, we were spinning, I'm guessing? Oh, yeah. I yeah, just, yeah. Uh, because I'm doing my second gear launch now. Oh, second gear launch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm okay. trying to get up there to time it right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's just. So you launched in second gear and you still spun that bad? Even right after the reef prep. Now, I was surprised you didn't take a longer burnout. I mean, your burnout was shorter than usual. We were um, well, with the amount of, it, it's burning out in a higher gear now, gear now okay. so I don't have to heat the tires up so much. Yeah. Um, honestly, I just think with the way they do it here, nothing against their track prep, but like a freight 10, you'll see, they drag the track, they put track prep down, and then they drag over top of it again to heat it up. And when yeah. you're when you're talking when you're talking about using a hand sprayer in this wind, yeah. how much is actually yeah. getting yeah, on yeah. The, getting on the track? Yeah. Not everybody's gonna spin. Yeah. But when you're at like almost a thousand wheel horsepower trying to yeah. put it down on the track. Right. And that's the thing, it's it just dependent, track dependent. I mean yeah. if I wanted to leave at easier yeah and then get on it i wouldn't have to spin but yeah but you're hitting it pretty hard so when you lifted the tires last time that photo that i saw from lee was that a second gear launch or a first gear launch when i pulled the wheels yeah that was first gear first gear yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so i would think it would be a lot harder in second gear because you're not going to get the same uh, no and that's the thing like at Bradenton, I had a, a 13560 foot in second gear. Wow, wow. So okay. It and worked. It works. Is it, that pretty much your best 60 foot? 130. In first gear with perfect at, conditions at and perfect prep and yeah. everything. Gotcha. Yeah, that was the back So if you're line. only off half a tenth in second gear and you don't have to take the shift, yeah. The that's second gonna, gear is more consistent. Yeah. Um, because you really need a well prep, prep, uh, prep track for the first gear launch. Yeah. Whereas the second gear is more forgiving. Uh, yeah. Like I said, when I first got here, I ran a 610. Yeah. With a 14260 foot. But they dragged it. They used the, this actual spray machine. Yeah. They and, took then more they time. and then they dragged it again. And the car took off. Yeah. Didn't have any problem hooking. 
it's just once you start using a hand sprayer, yeah. it's great for street cars and stuff. Yeah. But not the cars that can put more power on the track. Yeah. Well, it's a drag. I was hoping to have a closer run, but all right, mate. We'll do it again, man. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll see you out in Brainton or something sometime. Yeah. We got a donk out here with a whole lot of nitrous. Unfortunately, he's on the wrong side for our cameras, but we'll run it anyway. Whoa. I know this donk's got a lot of nitrous, but I don't think he's running a low six. Peak performance ready just came up. We're at 84% battery state of charge. He's waving me. He doesn't want me to. Oh, he wants me to go in first, I think. Or he doesn't want to run me. Here he comes now. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, go tree. Is he going to run or is he not going to run? He's not going to run. Oh, oh, oh. I was interested to see what that dog could do, but is he just that secretive about it that he doesn't want another car to go down next to him? That could give a rough idea of what his car can do? <laughs> I don't know what. What did you do? He wouldn't run me. He lined up, but he wouldn't leave the line. I just stopped in the middle of the track and waited for him, and he wouldn't come. <laughs> it was the silliest thing. I didn't think that car was running competitive with us. I don't know why he's being so secretive about it, but... I guess I could have pretty easily figured out what he was running because I've got so much more power, I could have stayed right with him all the way down the track and then just looked at my own time. And even though they're going to rip the ticket in half and not give me his side, I'll basically know what he ran because it's the, basically the same as what I ran. Although, of course, the reaction times will be a little different. Let's see if anybody else fast is running tonight. All right, we're eager to get lined up with something fast and... If we can't do that, we'll just line up with whoever we can line up with. This infinity sounds interesting. I'm going to let it go. And I think we'll be able to catch it. Let him go. There he goes. down at 82 percent that run against the dog didn't really hurt our battery at all but other than that we've had five rear runs how's that one that was good 609 609 back in the six o's i like it yep 609 thank you he's a little under you a little bit <laughs> yeah that infinity was no time so we're back in the six o's and we're at 82 percent battery state of charge i think it's safe to say that this car hasn't slowed down if I'm running 6.0 on these tires in these conditions, happy with that. We ran a 6.09 at 119.4 with a 151 60 foot. 403 to half track, we gave that Infinity the move, and that's why our reaction time was a 0.72. So even with that generous move, we still finished about a second and a half ahead of the import. 82% battery state of charge, and 6.09 at 119.4 better than the fastest run that the red eye challenger made tonight which was a 610 the plaid continues to perform we've seen this five liter fox body is it really a five liter it's got a parachute some mickey thompson's on there it's dumping out here in the front all right we've been trying to get lined up with this mustang with the chute tree no time car so I'm gonna be ready for the pro tree here all right we're peak performance ready 
81% battery state of charge. Track's feeling all right. We got the nittos on. He's just about in, here he comes. All right, pro tree. Don't think his tree was that much better than mine. He launched hard and kept pulling. I think he had about the same mile an hour we did too. So if he ran 120 and probably a 130 something 60 foot, that's gonna be a 590 car, maybe in 580. But it says no time on the window, so we'll never know for sure, unless he decides to share it with us. That car's got some power. Yeah, he does. I'm sure he was in the fives. You don't have to tell me. I'll ask him. It's up to him to tell me or not. Okay. But you're right. <laughs> had to be it, was, it was a higher number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess a 580 or 590 based on everything I saw in that pass. Pro tree coming up. Did I get a 610-ish or what I get? You got a 610 and you, yours, and your reaction and his reaction were almost the exact same number. Oh, I like that. Cool. So, yeah. I thought we left pretty close, but he uh, out 60-footed me. Yeah, he said, um, he goes, I think I'm going to stick around and do another one. Yeah? Yeah, so he wants to, he wants to, he wants to race you again. If he gave me the move, that would be interesting. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, she didn't tell me what it ran, but she did tell me that our reactions were real close. And that's what I was hoping for. So I had a 0.129 reaction on that pro tree, which is pretty good for a pro tree. Actually pretty similar to my reaction when I raced Mike's Challenger earlier on a pro tree, 0.12 something. A 151 60 foot not spectacular, but a 610, even now at 80% battery state of charge and 120.2 miles an hour. I like it, but that Mustang, gotta be in the fives, gotta be. It launched hard and it kept pulling all the way down the track. Maybe he'll tell me what he mile an hour. Let's see how much we can get out of him. Ah, oh, shoot, it's starting to rain. Gotta talk to him quick.
They, I mean, they weren't good. The, the, yeah. S, the S550 is actually a really nice car. Like the latest gen yeah. Mustang, those are really nice cars, man. They actually do work. The Camaro is actually a better built car, honestly. But once you beef up the suspension stuff, everything works really well. But yeah. factory to factory, Camaro is definitely probably a better car. But, yeah. yeah. But I think Ford did the right thing with the new Coyotes, like the Gen 3, the fuel systems. Like being a direct injected motor and stuff, like they actually kept a low pressure system and a direct injected system. So the GM did it. They just did direct injection on the LT. What, on the uh, new LTs. what model year? What's that? What model year is your Fox? 87. 87. It's a T-top, too. Oh, it is. Look at that. You can rock your mullet. Those you know, are pretty... Uh, put some Def Leppard in. I don't see many of those. <laughs> I do, I know. It's actually yeah. one of... It's actually a number two of like 220-something yeah. GT hatchback T-top in 87. So they, made them, they made them more in the 4i box, but in this 87 to 93 body, they didn't really make too many. Of them. It was 87 it was already, 80, 89. It was already 225 horse with 300 foot-pounds that year, was uh, it? Yeah, I think so. I don't even yeah. think it was that much torque. And it was before you were originally a uh, high speed? speed. Yeah, yeah, I had I had this motor in it, which is a, it's a 363 small block torque. It's a dark block. And I have way too small of heads on it. Like, I don't even have high ports on it. These are kind of like some bolt-on heads that I put like bigger springs in and have way too big of a turbo for it. So it's got an 88 mil turbo. 88. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Garrett, old school journal bearing. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, old school. <laughs> it yeah. works really well. Yeah. Right, man. What's your name? Your car performed. I'm Andrew. Brian. You are? Brian. Andrew, very nice to meet Brian, you. Brian, nice to meet you as I'm well. I'm sure I'll see you out here again. And uh, you don't mind if I shoot your car a little more, do you? No, good. Thanks, Brian. So he's on a beadlock Biggie Thompson Pro Bracket radials. And uh, those tuck nicely here. 87 box body, turbo with 30 pounds of boost. And he's launching on a trans brake with power glide. It's a 373 rear end. Yeah. Properly set up. Dipping into the fives. Nice. All right, we didn't get any rain after all, just a couple sprinkles here and there. They never had to shut down the track, which is nice. I'm glad we stuck around to race that fox body. You know, it's good to get your ass handed to you every once in a while, just to keep things competitive and, you know, keep everything in check. That was a fun race, and that guy's got the right setup to get down the track reliably in the high fives. Lightweight. Fox body with the right amount of boost, a glide, the tires, the gears. That's a winning formula. And that was a lot of fun. We're leaving the track with 80% battery, so we used 12% for this whole night of fun. We we're hoping to do the quarter mile out of Bradenton tomorrow night, but it's showing a 100% chance of rain almost the entire day. So we're trying to get out to the quarter mile. We're just having really bad luck with the weather. But we'll be out there again soon. Thanks for joining us tonight on the Tesla Plaid channel. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Do you mind telling us what's done to the red eye? No. Uh, got a uh, four innovation from the fuel system. Uh, aluminum dry shaft. It has the 675 pulley. Uh, 1440 injectors and 10% uh, lower. And, uh, right no, in, uh, I got a I got a uh, And then uh, what fuel are you running? I'm E85. E85? Oh, yeah. nice. So it runs, it runs pretty good. And I'm over here doing eight. What's, the, what's the fastest you ever ran in this? 93. 93? Yeah. All depends. And traction is the, the biggest thing. Um, Bradenton is my the track I run out all the time, and, uh, but I, I do now. I'm been working with my tuner, uh, Kurt Gustinoff, and uh, we've been working on the second gear launches. Nice. So, so uh, were you at the uh, uh, NMCA Most Car Mayhem? Yep, I was just there. Okay. Yeah, I ran this, and I have a great uh, 1320 that I raced also. Nice. So, how, how did you do? Um, Your sister say you slow. I was in the Hemi shootout. I went to the second round. Second round. Yeah. And then, uh, I had a lot of wheels. A lot of people were spending that day. It was okay. so hot. Are you going to Orlando this weekend? Yeah. 
All right, I'll see you there then. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be live streaming. At okay, I'm looking forward to it because the weather's supposed to be really good. Yeah, yeah I've, had, I've had the heads actually 14 years on three different motors, and I just keep using them. I'm like, shit, I got them, they're working. And uh, I had this motor, uh, a 76 mil turbo, and a six speed manual T56. And I drove it around forever. I mean, it was fun. I drove it around for about two years, and then I decided, man, I want to get serious because I didn't have a cage. Everything's falling apart on it. The rear end wasn't beefed up and shit. So I went to like, came out here with a six speed. I think I ran eight. Yeah. Just because it just broke yeah. loose all the way down yeah. the track. But I mean, it did 700 horsepower. Yeah. This is probably like right now, it feels like it's probably 12 or 1300. Well, man, I remember when, you know, I had I looked a, up your car after we left that night. I was like, yeah. holy shit! In terms of the specs, you mean? Yeah, I was yeah. like, it's like 1,100 horsepower. 10, 1020 yeah. horse, 1050 <laughs> torque. Like, holy shit! I'm yeah, baffled. Four digits, but, you I, know, I just, it's got so much weight. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I grand, like but. electric cars in a, in a way, but I'm just like, I don't... It's a I like it for the thrill of it, you know, they hit you instant torque, yeah. but like, what, it, what they, not like what they stand for, but like how they're built and everything, I'm not really... I think there's greener ways to get it, you know. What I mean? well, that's just me, but I, I think they're cool. I'm only driving. I know all kinds about it. I'm, I'm, don't get, I'm no tree hugger at all, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm uh, old school beer head. Hell yeah! But it's cool. It's Camaros, fast. Some Fox bodies. Yeah. You know, nitrous on almost all my cars, and uh, you know, I just can't, you know, wrench on them the way I used to. You know, my back hurts. Dude, I know. Uh, I'm a tech you know, still by day, and we build, you know, resto yeah. mods and you know, you know hot rods and shit. Obviously, I mean, anybody who's got a uh, trans brake and a delay box is going to take me on the tree because I'm foot braking it. Dude, I finally, yeah, yeah, I'm finally getting it better. You know, like, I actually yeah. thought it was going to have more of a problem with like learning it, but I was like, yeah. wow, you know, so it's easier than I thought. You launch it from a button? Yeah. yeah. I have one button to hold the brake, mash the floor, and then interrupt, bump, bump, yeah. bump. And then... But obviously, if you're on a pro tree, there's no reason to have a delay box or anything. I mean, you're going. Oh, no, yeah, mine's instant, zero yeah, yeah. reaction time when you let go of the button. It's yeah. gone. That's it, yeah. 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 You can I actually I have Mega Squirt Pro on this MSU Pro, and you can delay it if you want. You can delay a half second. You can delay your bumps, like how much your you know, trans brake interruption with the other button. Yeah. So you but, can delay that even. But do you stage shallow or deep? Yeah. Uh, because I found that if I stage deep, I can red light on a pro tree. Yeah. So I in just, that situation, I, I guess it, you know if I had a delay box, I could dial some delay in for that. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but but you just go in shallow or yeah shallow okay yeah I just bump into pro tree every time because that's yeah. what I've been trying to do is with no time stuff so yeah yeah you know I I, I haven't really gone to any good races I tried going to street nationals and we got snowed out or yeah. Florida snowed out yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah, yeah, yeah. all the snowbirds up there were right. pissed dude yeah. like you know I people been down there often. a week and like yeah. I went down once knocked the tires off and went back and I'm like all right so I started learning about density of the air and how much it's changing everything. Okay, I gotta dial this back. And yeah, yeah. Start, starting to get a feel for it.